Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your kind invitation. It's a pleasure to be here and talk to my colleagues and friends. So I will talk about the subject we worked on for the recent couple of years. Actually, this is the work we did last year with Jarek Piasecki, who is here. But I may also mention briefly results which I have been obtained with my colleague Paweł Jakubczyk previously. <clears throat> so let me start by defining the model I will continue, uh, consider. So this is a very simple model, very simple. It's called imperfect quantum gas, and the Hamiltonian has this simple form. So it, it consists of the in occupation number representation. It consists of the kinetic energy plus potential energy, which is sometimes called mean field potential energy, which represents the number of pairs of particles, n squared over 2 basically, per unit volume, multiplied by a constant A, which characterizes the interaction between particles. I will define in a moment what do I mean by this parameter A. Okay. So this is imperfect quantum gas. <coughs> now, this parameter A can be considered and understood within the so-called Katz model of interparticle interactions. Namely, what Katz suggested several years ago was to consider, instead of interparticle potential phi of R, to go into a model which is called Katz model, where you consider instead of phi of R potential gamma to power D, D is dimensionality of the system, times phi of argument, not R, but gamma times R. Gamma is a dimensionless parameter, and at the end of calculations, you consider the limit gamma going to zero, which is called gamma, which is called Katz limit. Now, if you, as an example, a simple example of this potential phi of R, you take, say, amplitude multiplying exponential decay with a decay length R0, <coughs> then this procedure amounts to multiplying amplitude by gamma to power D and changing the range of this potential R0 into R0 over gamma. So if you take the limit gamma going to zero, you consider potentials which are, so to say, weaker and weaker in the sense that amplitude goes to zero, but they are of longer and longer range, okay? So that means that in this model, each particle interacts with basically all particles in the system. Uh, and the nice property, as you say, of this model is that if you calculate the integral over the whole space of this Katz potential, then it is gamma independent. Because if you change the variables, gamma drops out, and you simply get the integral over the original potential phi of r. And this integral, I, I take this integral to be equal to this parameter a uh, in, the, in the imperfect gas model, okay? So this is this. Sorry? Imperfect gas model, right. So that is the idea, all right? You also should notice that uh, a certain simplification, of course, occurs here, because if I take the interparticle interaction integrated over whole space, and I want to take the effect of this on the whole system, then multiplication by the number of pairs simply amounts also to neglecting of correlations between pairs of particles. So that's why I called it mean field approximation. Okay. Now, uh, what I will do, I will consider repulsive bosons, which are well defined by the same Hamiltonian with parameter A, which I will call AB, and AB is positive. And in parallel, I will consider attractive fermions the Hamiltonian has the same form, but now this parameter is negative, so I put a minus sign here and take this parameter AF, in this case, positive. Okay, so both AB and AF are positives, but the point is that there is a different sign in case of bosons compared to the case of fermions. So this is the object of our interest. 
I will work in the <coughs> grand canonical formalism, that means the thermodynamic state of this system is defined by temperature, chemical potential, and the volume of the system. I will consider, try to calculate the grand canonical potential, which is a function of these three parameters. And once I have this grand canonical potential, omega, of course. I mean, I don't know, but. But I am the guest here. Yeah. The question is why do you call them fermions? There is a difference also that in the construction in the field, if I have a really interacting fermions, if, in, if the interaction between those fermions are attractive, then somehow, somewhere there should be a Fermi energy built in the system. Because of well, Fermi energy result of Fermi statistics. You, you, you will see that there is no, pr there is. You will have somehow, because I mean, even if they are attractive, they cannot get packed too much because of the statistics. That is true. No. Well, where, I, I, where is the Fermi? You, you, you will see, okay. you, you will see in a moment. But I mean, there are fermions, there is Fermi energy. Yeah. You can't see on the screen, but I mean, okay. it comes, all right? <laughs> yeah. So coming back to this grand canonical potential, one, once we have it, then we can calculate the thermodynamic limit uh, by dividing it, by per, taking per unit volume in thermodynamic limit, and this I will call lowercase omega. This is a function only of this intensive parameters, temperature and chemical potential. And once I have omega, I can calculate the pressure, which is simply minus omega, and I can calculate the density, which is the derivative of omega with respect to mu. <coughs> And what I will try to show is that if I consider those repulsive bosons and attractive fermions in two dimensions, they are equivalent according to my to title of my seminar. Okay. Well, be before I go and uh, try to convince you that this is the case, let me tell you a few words, make a short digression about repulsive bosons in dimensionality larger than two, which is not the main topic of my, of my talk here. But I will try to convince you that this imperfect boson gas, in this case repulsive bosons, it has some interesting properties from the point of view of Bose-Einstein condensation. <coughs> so uh, if I do the analysis of the repulsive bosons system in dimensionality larger than two, I can in particular calculate the phase diagram, which is, I mean, the colors are bad, but, but what you see on this phase diagram is the uh, vertical axis, which is the chemical potential, and horizontal axis, which is temperature in arbitrary units. It's a schematic drawing. And you see two re regions of this phase diagram. This one is, in principle, blue, and this one is reddish. So in blue, this is the region of phase diagram where there is no condensate, and the reddish one is the region in which you have condensate, and this red line is the line of critical points which separates these two phases, with condensate and without condensate. So if you compare this to the case of perfect Bose gas, uh, then you see a substantial difference in the structure of the phase diagram, because in the case of perfect Bose gas, the region in which one can talk about thermodynamics is restricted to negative values of chemical potential, so that means that this region does not exist, so to say, cannot be taken into account. And the region where you have condensate is restricted to a segment of the temperature axis between temperature zero and critical temperature Tc. Okay? Here, the region where you have condensate in the imperfect case is, is, the, whole, is the whole part of, uh, of the phase diagram. So you can say that this is a region where you have this generically, generically broken uh, continuous symmetry in this whole region, while here it's only restricted to this segment. Now, uh, if you are interested in the structure of this line separating these two phases, this I call it line of critical points, uh, this is given by a function mu c of t. 
and mu c of t is proportional to the coupling constant and to temperature to power d over 2. All right. And all this works for d larger than 2. If you take d equal to or d smaller than 2, then you don't, uh, don't get condensation, similarly as in the perfect ca case. Uh, by the way, if you are interested in the density of the condensate in this region, then it is given by a simple formula, namely by mu minus mu c of t over a b. Okay? So this is the density of, of condensate in this region. So if mu is equal to mu c, it's zero, and then it grows upon increasing mu. This imperfect Bose gas has also interesting properties from the point of view of the critical behavior of the system upon approaching this critical line. So we see we approach the critical line from below, and we introduce a small parameter measuring the distance from this critical line, which is defined as mu c at given t mi minus mu over mu c of t. And for example, if you look at the expression for the correlation lengths, density, density correlation function and the correla corresponding correlation lengths, then this correlation length is asymptotically for small epsilon given by epsilon to power minus nu, where nu is this critical index describing the, the critical behavior of this system. And it is given by formula which tells us that for d between 2 and 4, it is equal to 1 over d minus 2. So this critical index depends on, on, on the dimensionality of the system, contrary to what happens in the mean field theory. While for d larger than 4, it is equal to 1 half. Okay? So th this is a non-trivial behavior. And actually, if you calculate other critical exponents, for example, exponent alpha characterizing behavior of, say, specific heat upon approaching this line, you also get analogous formula where you have this non-trivial d dependence for d between 2 and 4 and constant for d larger than 4. So from this point of view, it turns out that this imperfect Bose gas is, in this sense, equivalent to a completely different model, a completely different model, which is called the berlin katz spherical model. It's a model of spin system on a lattice, which I'm not going to describe, but it turns out that there is this analogy between these two, these two models, and actually what we also did in addition to all this, and I will not mentioned this, is that we also calculated Casimir force. Namely, we placed this imperfect Bose gas between two walls, and we looked at the interaction between the walls due to thermal fluctuations of the system, it's called thermal Casimir force. And this thermal Casimir force has interesting properties, and it turns out that it is the same, actually, uh, Casimir force sorry, which can be obtained in the, in the berlin katz spherical model. So there is this um, deep relation between these two models. Okay, but now I'm going, back to, I'm going back to attractive fermions and repulsive bosons, and I will try to calculate, I will reduce the analysis in a second to two dimensions, but before that I will try to look at the existence of the grand canonical potential for each of these systems, for the repulsive bosons and attractive fermions. You see that in the case of attractive bosons, this mean field term poses no danger because you have summation over n from zero to infinity, but you have e to power minus beta something positive times n squared, right? While in the case of fermions, it is not so because if you have e to power plus beta times positive parameter af times n squared. So there's a question whether this, whether this sum exists, and if it does, then when, and under what conditions, and so on. Okay. So now, in order to answer this question, we will introduce the so-called hubbard stratonov Well, the statistics is sitting here, right? N k can be zero to infinity. N k, of course. Is the the yeah, yeah. It is. That was my, that was my question. Et, et to okay. 
Yeah, yeah, sure. So here NK is either 0 or 1, and here NK goes from 0 to. <coughs> yeah, yeah. The prime means restriction, but I mean, this is Fermi restriction, this is Bose non restriction, so to say. Right, 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 sure. All right. So in order to calculate this, I mean, you know, if it would be linear in N, as it is in the ideal gas, right? Then, then, then of course, we can do this summation. But if you have this N squared term, you can't do the, the, this summation. But in order to, to, so to say, push forward this analysis, we introduced the so-called hubbard stratonovic uh, transformation in which this term e to power minus, say, beta uh, AB over 2V, this sum squared, that means this term, can be replaced by an integral over dq from minus to plus infinity, exponential function uh, of minus something times q squared, and term linear in this n. All right? So if you put this stuff into here, then you get exponential altogether, which is linear in the sum over n case. Okay, so this is the, so to say, benefit of using this hubbard stratonovich transformation, and we do it both in the, in the Bose case and in the... Yes, 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 exactly, 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 right, right, yeah, yeah, well. So, uh, you see, the difference between these two cases, bosons and fermions, is that in the Bose case, you actually have no I, imaginary no units. Of, so, because, right, right. And here it's, it's a real thing, right? Mm -hmm. So, if you change the variable Q to um, IQ, you, you turn this integral into integral in the complex plane. But, I mean, that doesn't hurt. Because, if we want to do this calculation, and use this transformation, then on the case, an example of attractive fermions, you can rewrite the expression for the grand canonical partition function. From that you can calculate omega. You can calculate this grand canonical partition function in the case of fermions as this integral over dq of exponential function of minus v times a function which depends only on t and mu parameters and this integration variable q, okay? And this function has this form. So the question whether the partition function exists or not can be now rephrased as a question whether this integral exists or not. And that depends on how does this function phi f of q behaves. A, a mathematician, a nasty mathematician would also ask a question whether it's permissible yes. to change the yes. order yes. of the integration yes. Yes. yes, 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 that is true. Well, the answer is that you have to be careful in dimensions larger than two, but in two, in d equal two and below, there is no problem, so to say, because there is no phase transition, right? So, the, so to say, to give you the feeling, right, right, there might be a problem, right? Because in the case of bosons, there is, in the case of bosons, there is Bose-Einstein condensation. Now, in the, in the fermions, there is no problem because there is no condensation. But it would seem that this summation is just divergent. The original one with n squared. Yes. Okay. You, you, you will see that in a second. So it turns out that if d is larger than 2, then this, par this partition function does not exist. This integral is blowing up, all right? While in the case of d equal 2, it exists, but it exists only for a particular range of this parameter AF, namely for AF smaller than a certain parameter A0. You see this parameter A0, you can see it exists in this expression phi F, which is sitting here, and I have rewritten this, the formula for this function in such a way to see explicitly the dependence on this parameter AF, and it turns out that it enters divided by this parameter A0, right? So A0 is a, is a parameter which shows up in this business, and it is equal to h squared over 2 pi m, all right? Which is actually a well-known parameter in quantum mechanics, right? If you, if you look at the 
scattering amplitude in, in say, Born approximation, it appears there. So, so one, one can say that if this attraction is not so strong, the current statistics sufficient to <coughs> counterbalance the effect of attraction and lead to a stable thermodynamic state. But yeah, yeah, so, so, so. Yeah, so let me finish with that. So if d is equal to, then this partition function exists for AF not too large, smaller than this parameter A0. And what is interesting is that if d is equal to 2 and AF is equal to A0, this limiting value, then this uh, grand canonical partition function exists only for negative values of chemical potential. And you know, negative values of chemical potential which are allowed into place, they smell like, like bosons, perfect bosons. So you will see that it is not ac accidental, so to say. Once again, this is this uh, parameter A0, which plays crucial role in this analysis. It has the dimensionality of energy times in uh, two dimensions, meter squared energy times meter squared, all right? And to convince you that this result can be understood in a simpler way is the statement that if you take the ground state energy of the Fermi system per unit particle in thermodynamic limit, then this ground state energy as a function of density in this case is proportional to A0 minus AF. So it is positive as long as AF is smaller than A0, or not larger. Otherwise, it turns negative, which can cause problems, right? So, so, so this is another, so to say, perspective on this restriction. And please note that in this analysis for fermions, two-dimensional fermions, this parameter drops out. And actually what counts is the ratio of A0 over AF. It's not multiplied by any function of temperature. Temperature is a prefactor in front of everything, so to say. So it has this simple form. Okay, so now if I do this analysis, and by doing the analysis, I mean evaluating this integral using the saddle point method, the steepest descent method, right? Because I'm interested in thermodynamic limits, so V is a large parameter, right? so I can use the steepest descent method. <coughs> so in the steepest descent method, I obtain the following results. So first of all, the grand canonical potential per unit volume in thermodynamic limit is equal to this function phi f, which I defined previously, evaluated at particular value of parameter q, which I call q0 as a function of t and mu. It additionally depends on parameters t and mu. And this parameter q0 of t and mu, this function, is a solution of this equation. Okay, so I have to solve this equation from the saddle point method and plug it in here. By the way, the density of the fermions is related to this parameter Q0 in a simple way, namely Q0 that is beta times mu minus plus beta times AF times the density of fermions, okay? So once I have Q0, I can calculate the, the density. I will not tell you the, 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 the details about this, but I mean, th this is the set of equation you, you, you have to solve. And analogous things actually happens for two-dimensional repulsive bosons. Namely, in this case, the grand canonical potential per unit volume is again given by a simple similar formula, but function phi f is replaced by function phi b, which is different. I will show them in a moment. And again, you have to solve this equation, this time for parameter S0, stemming from the steepest descent method, and S0 is the solution of an equation, which looks like that, which you see somewhat similar to this equation, but different, I mean. Okay. And again, the density of bosons is related to this parameter S0 via this formula. So once I have this parameter S0, I can calculate the density of bosons. And once I have this parameter S0 or Q0, I can calculate this function omega, and this function omega is basically minus pressure. So I have both density and pressure. Okay. 
These functions phi f and phi b, which have to be evaluated, they are given by this formula, so they're basically very simple. It's q shifted q squared multiplied by this, let me call it inverse coupling constant. And uh, here, the, the, here is G2, G2 is the Bose function, which is defined this way, okay. But G2 of argument minus epsilon to power Q, that's for fermions, and for bosons it's G2 of plus epsilon to power S. And one has to take care about the signs and so on. But, but I mean, this is the problem I have to solve. So basically now I tell you what are the conclusions, because what has to be done is, is algebra, okay, and, and to prove this equivalence. So what are the conclusions? So the conclusions are as follows. I consider two-dimensional case, namely I consider these attractive fermions which are at temperature T, chemical potential mu, and parameterized by this parameter AF, and at the same time repulsive bosons at the same thermodynamic state, but at parameter AB. And it turns out that if parameters AF and AB fulfill this kind of relation, we can call it symmetry relation, AF plus AB is equal to A0. Of course, AF is between 0 and A0. Then these thermodynamic potentials evaluated at AF and AB fulfilling this relation are identical. So by this I mean the thermodynamic equivalence of attractive fermions and repulsive bosons. Actually, if you do the calculation, you can prove that it follows that NF is this equal to NB, evaluated at appropriately taken AF and B according to this relation. And then if you go to pressure as a function of temperature and density, then again you get analogous result. So this is the thermodynamic equivalence of these two systems. Okay. In particular, you see that if AF is equal to A0, is equal to this limiting value, that means the attractive fermions, they attract themselves as strongly as possible. That corresponds to AB equal to zero, and that corresponds to ideal Bose gas, okay? Or opposite, I'm sorry, or opposite. If AB is uh, uh, equal to A0, uh, then AF is zero, and AB equal to A0, that means the bosons repel as strongly as possible, that is equivalent to ideal Fermi gas in two dimensions. Okay. This relation does not hold in, in, in dimensionality, it's lower than two. Before I show you a few figures, l l let me stress one fact, which maybe escaped your attention. Namely, what is the difference between these bosons and fermions? I assume that they have the same mass. Okay, and I, and I consider them spinless, so to say, so I don't take the spin degeneracy into account, okay? If you would ask me what happens if the fermions and bosons would have a different masses, then I would have to introduce different parameters, A0, one for fermions and one for bosons, because you remember A0 depends on the mass of the particle, okay? And then this result would look as AF over A0F plus AB over A0B equal one. This is the modification. Sure. No, it is not. No. I mean, I, I, can, I can not talk about this, uh, ana this equivalence because, because that would correspond, so to say, formally to negative AF, yeah. and, and that, that I don't take into account, no. All right? Yeah. So if you yeah. want to have them equivalent, then they have to, AB also have to be limited. Uh, right, in, in, this, in this range, in this range. Yeah. But I start from unlimited yeah. NB. Right, right, right. So since I didn't show you the algebra, let me show you the figures, okay? So 
I will show you the figures. So this is my statement. Attractive fermions at AF are equivalent to attractive to repulsive bosons at AB equal A0 minus AF. So let me first show you the plot of the imperfect Fermi gas density NF, which is the broken line, okay, at a particular value of AF, namely AF equal zero. So this is the ideal case, okay? And then what I do, I increase the parameter A. So a, AF over A0 equal 0.2, that is the blue curve, and I increase this parameter up to value 0.95, which corresponds to this red, red curve. And then you see that if I put AF over A0 equal to 1, I get the black curve, which should correspond to the ideal Bose gas, and it does. You see, everything is restricted to non-positive values of the chemical potential, all right? So that shows what I told you in words before. Now, what I do now, I plot the density of fermions and the density of bosons as a function of this parameter beta times mu, chemical potential divided by, by temperature. Now, <coughs> so again, the, the plot for fermions is done for uh, AF or A0.6, and this is this broken line. And then on top of this uh, broken line, I plot densities of bosons. Bosons corresponding to various values of AB over A0, 0 0.2, 0.3, etc. So this is 0.2, that is 0.3. Now this is 0.38, which is very close to 1 minus 0.6. So the, so the Bose density, the red one, comes closer and closer to the Fermi density, corresponding to this value AF fulfilling the symmetry relation. All right? And then if um, AB is 0.42, then I go a little bit below this broken curve, and then I go down. So I think I have convinced you that really if I put AB equal 0.4, between 0.30 and 0.42, these two curves, the red curve corresponding to 0.4 and this broken curve would, uh, would fall one onto another. What seems to be strange is that there is no dramatic change where, where you change the sign of mu. Those would be... Yes. As Not, not in this case. Not in, not, yeah, yeah, no, no, it, this is the point. Not in this case. Not, not in this case. Not in this case. Right, right. That, that, I mean, that, that's the title of my seminar. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and maybe one, one more figure. Now I plot, you see, <coughs> not the densities, but the pressures for fermions and for bosons. Again, for Fermi case, equal AF over A0, 0.6. This is this broken line here. And then pressure for uh, Bose, imperfect Bose gas for various values of AB. And you see, I observe again the same fact that if AB comes to value 1 minus this 0.6, then these two curves should coincide, okay? And in particular, if I put AB equal um, um, uh, zero, I get this curve, right? So, so this is the, <coughs> this is the, so to say, basic uh, thing which I wanted to say, and I would like to thank you for your attention, if there are any questions. <coughs> No, so, uh, uh, further, further on, when you have the definition, no. F further? The uh, right. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. Yes. Suppose I am uh, not old-fashioned that I don't want to do it analytically. I just put it on a computer and ask the question, what is the behavior of this function when I increase the upper limit in the summation? Right. I have a sum right. for finite number of terms. Right. The number and, now and you take arbitrary AF, so to say. Summation in a different way for bosons and for fermions. No, no. 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 Sure, of, co of course, of course. It would, it would blow up. I plot the result for different values of AB. 
it would blow up. Would blow up. <laughs> right. So uh, why is this expression wrong if it blows up? Well, so it does. It does. That does not exist. I mean. So how is this related then to your results? My, my, my results says that if I do all these transformations I told you about, I get no, the same no, conclusion. No, no transformations. Yeah, you have a definition of a certain... Yeah, but that's the, that blows up in more than two dimensions. Let's, right. Let's do it. Let, right. And if you take AF, which is too large, it will blow up. And if it, if I, it seems that for any AF... If it's not too large, it will exist. I mean, it will... Be, remain finite, so to say, upon increasing n, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. Right. No, it will so not blow up no. if a, a is satisfied in condition. A yeah. zero, you will find no. out that for, for set a, it will so blow up. up. So, okay, so these results can be confirmed just by numerical... Absolutely. Yes, ab absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Uh, as far as the sign of field is concerned, let me stress the remarkable property of the repulsive Bose gas for an ideal gas, we know that thermodynamics is restricted to negative values of mu. But once you add this yeah. arbitrarily weak uh, repulsive term, which yeah. blows up, then it, it is defined for <coughs> any value of mu. Yeah, so it's positive yeah, and negative. Yeah, and for all the positive condensation yeah. is preserved. It's a, from this point of view, it's a remarkable model, this yeah. imperfect. And everything, moreover, has been rigorously proved it, it, by mathematicians. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Correct. Okay, so, you know, if you have attractive fermions, then for most attractive potentials, you would also have bound states, molecular Right, states. which I don't take into account. Right, which are completely neglected. Right, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Right, right, right. <coughs> But a zero is not radius, because the, the, it, has, it, has, it has energy times meter squared. Yeah, that's true. So that's the energy you need to put a particle in this given region of two dimensions by uncertainty relation. All right. So maybe I, I make one, one, one comment. Yeah, this. Laplacian, it's h, h squared over 2 Yeah, sure, and sure. Sure. Well, when you talk about this parameter, I mean, if you want to calculate this, the scattering uh, amplitude, right? So in, in the Born approximation, you get, you get uh, uh, this thing, and, and, and it is divided by a zero. Right? So for Q equals zero, for Q equals zero, that goes to my parameter AB divided by a zero. By the way, by the way, so to say. And, uh, I mean, the cuts potential, it's a cuts potential, but then there was this Van Kampen generalization of it, where it is in connection to the, to the Born approximation. 
Yeah, but I'm not talking about that. So this is remark number one. And remark number two is, uh, you know, it's, it's a simple thing because you describe your system in terms of one parameter, AB and AF, right? I mean, what experimentalists like is scattering lengths, also one parameter, right? So there is this question, what is the relation between this parameter AB and the scattering lengths, another, another single parameter which experimentalists la like to parameterize the results, okay? And the, the Yeah, well, yes. You, you, what you, so, so let me ask you a question. So you, you can think about the fermions and Fermi energy, okay? That means, uh, so to say, so to say, um, uh, no, yeah. Uh, so uh, the Fermi energy I want to express as a function of n. All right, as a function of density. And it turns out that it is proportional, I don't want to make a mistake, n to power d over 2. So we see if d is larger than, think about this in terms of particle numbers at fixed volume. So you see if d is larger than 2, that grows quicker than n. And since this is energy per unit particle, so it would grow quicker than n squared. And that would, so to say, diverge, right? While d equal 2 is the limiting value, where you have linear term or quadratic in terms of so n's, right? So I don't know whether this is, but maybe it helps somehow no, grasp, grasp that d equal 2 is this bordering limit. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and it can occur provided the scattering constant is not too large. Because the essential part, of course, is the sum with the n cases. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So n is not phased in. Yeah. And, but it cannot grow too fast. As you know, most of the experiments these days are done in the harmonic class. Right. I don't know. This is for uniform system, right? This is for a uniform system, right? I don't know. We didn't, we didn't do that. We thought about this, but we haven't done it yet. No. Yeah. But we go, we go to the limit. We, yeah. Yeah. Actually, actually, this expression which you have here, that is the result of going from summation of a discrete state to integration after change of variables. Okay, so this is already done in the well consistently in inter. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. But let, let me tell you one thing which is kind of interesting. Maybe you can, you can comment on this, okay? What is the relation between this, say bosons, okay, for bosons. What is the relation between parameter AB, here defined as the integral of the potential, and uh, the scattering length A, all right? And how these two parameters uh, are related to the ground state energy per particle. But this relation you can get for some simple models of the yeah. potential, like, like a step function or something. Yeah, right, right, right. I, I will tell you what, what are the things. So if you take 3D, three-dimensional system, which I do not consider, but let, let me tell two words about it. So in this case, you, well, you have AB is AB, right? Is the integral over the potential. And then the relation between scattering lengths and AB, that is basically AB over A0. So it's very simple. So basically AB is A. Okay. Actually, when we put this paper to, to this article to be published, so the referee immediately 
we're looking at parameter A, B as the scattering length, which is not true. It's true for in, two, in three dimensions. I mean, we don't use scattering length. All right. And what is the expression for the ground state energy? It's very simple in this imperfect gas model, namely A0 is AB times N over 2. OK? So basically, if you put this relation in here, it's proportional to density times scattering length. OK? And this is a well-known result, rigorously derived by Leap and, and his family, so to say, <laughs> all over the world. <laughs> right? So, but now, but now, but now comes two dimensions. Again, we have AB. Now AB is a two-dimensional integral of a thing. So, so we have this parameter AB, okay? And we have scattering length A, which is related to AB in the following way. It's a range of the potential R, R0. So it's a concept which goes beyond the Katz model because here the range is infinite but is the range of the potential times e to power minus a0 over, I guess, 2ab. Okay? This is the relation between scattering lengths and ab. It's completely different in two dimensions than in, than in three dimensions. And now, the... I'm talking about repulsive bosons. Ah. I'm talking about repulsive bosons. Okay, yeah, yeah. Then yeah, I'm talking about, yeah, yeah. No, right. You see, A, A, B, right? A, B, repulsive bosons. But now in 2D, if I take my expression for E0, then it is the same in three dimensions as in two dimensions. It's, it's mean field thing. So it's again A, B times N over 2. But if you look at the literature and uh, say results by Leap and others on this E0, then they are completely different in two dimensions than in three dimensions because in two dimensions E0 is proportional to n divided by logarithm of one over n times a squared, where a is the scattering length. So it's this kind of result, all right? So it's so so in terms in terms of scattering lengths it looks like that. Now our result in terms of A B looks like that. But we have the relation between A B and A, provided we know what is R0. Now if you put all this to get this result into here, you get the following thing. A0 is proportional to n divided by logarithm of r0 over a factor 2 here. So, I mean, it looks similar, but it's not. But it becomes identical if you identify r0 with 1 over density to power 1 half. If you take the range of the potential as the average distance between the particles, okay? So, I mean, you, you, you have to do this identification in order to get consistency between rigorous results and which include fluctuations and our mean field results, which only, so to say, partly include fluctuations. Okay? So, then they become consistent, so to say. No, 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 no. That is not my language. No, no. I, I just wanted to. No. Well, there is room, but the potential is hidden uh, under the integral sign. Yes. So there is. No. A B A B is the integral. Uh, absolutely. No, I mean, we have, 
we need, we need a very limited yeah. information about potential, only the integral of this potential, yeah. right? system is exactly given yeah. by the imperfect uh, yeah. instead of imperfect quantum gas we have been studying here. So we can start with a given potential, but then of course what remains at the end is just the integral of this potential. It enters only like that, that the was the beauty of the gas. Yeah, by, by the way, if you talk about that, so maybe maybe I write one more formula which somehow is related to this question. I mean, if you, if you use the second quantized language, so to say, and you write down the interaction part of the Hamiltonian, okay? So that is, well, forget the one half and V, so to say, that sum over K, sum over K prime and sum over Q, and you have this K, say, plus Q, A dagger, K prime, minus Q, the Fourier transform of the potential at Q, and you have here a k prime and a k, all right? What you do now, you take the Fourier transform of the Katz model. That means your vq is integral over dr e to power minus iqr, and here comes potential gamma to power d, v of gamma r, okay? If you do this, then it turns out that the Fourier transform of the potential V actually depends on Q via Q over gamma, all right? So now if you go to limit gamma going to zero, that means you take larger and larger arguments, that means everything vanishes except for the case Q equals zero. And the case Q equals zero, that goes out and you are left with my, par my parameters, say, a, b times n squared. Okay, so that's... I have one more remark. Yes, please. Uh, in the harmonic trap, uh, the uh, repulsive Bose gas is equivalent in terms of the shape of the cloud to the ideal Fermi gas only in G equal to. I see. In all uh, other dimensions. Uh -huh, so co in a sense consistent with <laughs> what you but see. Again, uh huh. Repulsive with ideal. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 But then any so in my language, it should be appropriately repulsive, right? Yes. <laughs> right. And I, I have one question but for the audience. There is this. There are these results of this equivalence which have been just presented. But could be some. Could they be useful for something? Because it is. The question is where do. So that means that I should finish. Yeah. No, oh no, no, not yet. Okay, so. So thank you very much.